Eclectic Australian composer Percy Granger began life as a musical prodigy. His first studies on piano with his mother led to a career as a concert pianist before the age of 20, with sensational successes in England, Australia, and South Africa. In 1906, composer Edvard Grieg was so impressed that he invited Granger to premiere Grieg's piano concerto later that year in Leeds, England. Given this success as a pianist, Granger's position as a relative unknown in the ranks of 20th century composers is difficult to assess. He was a remarkable innovator, using irregular rhythms before Stravinsky, predating Varese in experimental electronic music, and pioneering in folk music collection in 1901, two years earlier than Bartok. It was around this time that Granger took a keen interest in the folk songs of Lincolnshire, England. Granger befriended the folk singers of the region and notated their folk songs, in the process developing an affinity for their unique ways. Granger later wrote, these folk singers were kings and queens of song. No concert singer I have ever heard approached these rural warblers in variety of tone quality, range of dynamics, rhythmic resourcefulness, and individuality of style. Our concert singers can show nothing better, and often nothing as good, as slavish obedience to the tyrannical behests of composers. What dull dogs they are, with their monotonous mooing and bellowing between mezzo forte and fortissimo, and with never a pianissimo to their name. But our folk singers were lords in their own domain. They were at once performers and creators. In 1906, Granger acquired an Edison cylinder phonograph and set about to record the folk songs he had notated during the previous six years. Among them, Granger revisited Mr. Joseph Taylor in the village of Saxby All Saints, Lincolnshire, to capture Mr. Taylor's version of Rufford Park Poachers. They say the forty gallon poachers there was in the mail. They'd often been a passage when the number it was less. So poachers bold as I would fall, keep off your gallon car. And think about those poachers bold that night is not as far. Granger came to America in 1915 and at the outbreak of World War I enlisted with the 15th Army Band at Fort Hamilton, New York. During his Army Band time, Granger was exposed daily to all manner of wind and percussion instruments, later writing that he had always longed for such a thrilling and compositionally instructive experience. After his discharge from the military in 1919, Granger resumed touring as a pianist and began teaching piano in Chicago in the summer months. During the 1932-33 academic year, Granger was head of the music department at New York University. Several of his compositions and band arrangements were premiered by the Goldman Band in New York and he frequently appeared as its guest conductor or piano soloist. The connection with the Goldman Band produced a commission from Edwin Goldman's newly formed American Bandmasters Association in 1937. For this commission, Granger chose to write a work based on six of the folk songs he had gathered some 30 years earlier in Lincolnshire. This bunch of musical wildflowers, he said, is dedicated to the old folk singers who sang so sweetly to me. In a letter to his friend and composer Roger Quilter, dated February 14, 1937, Granger wrote of his excitement about the piece and its imminent premiere. Thanks, darling Roger. I've been having such a lovely time. The American Bandmasters Association have asked me to prepare some military band works, if serious, for their convention in Milwaukee, March 7. So I am composing a Lincolnshire posy on folk tunes I gathered in Lincolnshire, Dublin Bay, Hawkstow Grange, and Rufford Park Poachers. In Hawkstow Grange, a tune I'm very fond of, the phrase marked X gets new harmonies each verse, with a heightening of discordant intenseness each time. The clash of G natural, G sharp, C natural, C sharp in the fourth verse gave Ella and me a real thrill. It had a nervous sound somehow. The premiere of Lincolnshire Posey at the ABA convention in Milwaukee just three weeks later was a disaster. 
Granger had written the third movement based on Mr. Taylor's Rufford Park poachers in a mixed 5-8 and 4-8 meter exactly as it was recorded on the Edison cylinder. At the premiere, the performance of this rhythmically difficult setting fell completely apart several times. The musicians hired to perform the piece had apparently enjoyed the local Milwaukee Fair a bit too much the night before. This embarrassment prompted Granger to write later in the preface to the published score that band leaders need not be afraid of the irregular rhythms in the Lincolnshire posy. These are well within the range of any normal high school band. The only players likely to balk at those rhythms are seasoned professional bandsmen who think more of their beer than of their music. The stropic nature of the folk song genre, along with the expanded tone palette of the wind band, proved to be the perfect vehicle for Granger's ingenuity and high originality. In each repetition of each verse, a masterful variation in orchestration is realized. In the 70 years since its premiere, Lincolnshire Posey has come to be recognized as a masterpiece of wind scoring, enjoying tens of thousands of performances worldwide.